Hey guys and welcome back to another Accent to video. In today's video I'm back doing another interview and I'm here with Luke Evans. Luke, how are you? Yeah, good thanks mate, how are you? I'm great, thank you very much for coming on the channel mate. My pleasure, my pleasure. Great, okay, so am I right in saying you're 26, you're a super lightweight, you're 12 0 and one Yeah, that's correct, yeah. All right, great, yeah. okay, well if you're on the around here and you haven't subscribed, please do so, like the video if you do need like the video, and let's get straight into it. So, the question which I always like to start off with is why did you start boxing? Uh, well, I was an amateur before I turned professional and mm. uh, the reason I started boxing as an amateur was because mm. I had quite a lot of puppy fat as a kid and uh, I used to be you know, bullied by the older kids so I wanted to learn how to protect myself. Um, my first love was football but my dad encouraged me to, to try other things um, ended up falling in love with boxing and my football got put to one side and I've just ran away with it ever since and you know now I'm here as a professional fighter mm -hmm. 16 years later. Mm -hmm. You are indeed and so you spoke about your amateur career and do you remember what happened in your first amateur fight? I do yeah I boxed a lad from Warrington mm -hmm. I remember Robin Reed was handing out the trophies so um, it really inspired me to put on a good performance and I won my very first amateur fight by a unanimous decision uh, in Warrington and um, it was a fantastic ex experience and I was only 10 years old, I believe. Oh, 10 wow. or 11 years old, yeah. That's that's very good. Uh, a young start, a lot of fighters may may start at that age but don't go straight into fighting at that age and to be fair, to get the win on your on your first fight is very impressive. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was um, it was a fantastic experience for myself. I mean, uh, like I said, I remember uh, Robin Reed handing out the trophies, and I was starstruck because you know you see Robin Reed fighting the likes of Joe Calzaghe back in the day and, yeah. and things like that. You know, for a young lad, I was very motivated and inspired, and uh, and I was twenty kilos lighter as well. Um, but yeah, it was a, a fantastic experience, mate. Mm -hmm. Great. And so, how many amateur fights did you end up racking up? I believe I had 41 mm -hmm. amateur fights, won 26, I think. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was okay. It was a good good record. Definitely. A few of the losses was debatable. Right. So, yeah. Yeah, you get them things happening in the amateurs. But what was sure your do. biggest achievement from the amateur time? Uh, well, I boxed um, for a couple of the England regional squads against various countries. Uh, my favourite fight probably was um, when I boxed the Scottish champion. He was um, the Tri-Nation silver champion of that year. Mm -hmm. um, and for myself, someone who just competes on the small hall, uh, boxing shows, the amateur shows, um, and the local Manchester boxing scene, um, it was a big victory for me. Um, also fighting a European... A European medalist uh, from Ireland, I believe his name was Clive O'Mara. Oh, right. um, he was from Limerick, mm -hmm. and um, he was a really, really top top fighter. Anyway, I, I beat him, and I dropped him twice as well. So it was such a, a big performance, and he was in my hometown as well, Salford. So uh, yeah, amazing memories. Great, great. And so you you had all these memories, and I was interested in why did you end up wanting to turn pro when you did. Uh, well, I turned professional when I was when I was eighteen, mm -hmm. um, and I had my first fight when I was nineteen. I turned over quite young. Mm -hmm. um, I was very, you know, how can I say? I wasn't mature right. for my age. I was very young. Mm -hmm. uh, my body was still developing. Um, but the real reason I, I turned pro uh, turned professional was because I seen how the sport was evolving in the professional side of it, and I thought I'd love to do that. Definitely. What better way? Then to progress from an amateur into a professional, and I thought this is exactly what I've worked for all these years. Why not make the move? Mm -hmm. Why do why do why do I have to wait till I'm in my mid twenties? I wanted to do it as soon as possible, and um, yeah, it was such a proud achievement for me to turn over at such a young age. Definitely, we well, spoke about you don't want to you didn't want to do it when you're in your your mid twenties. Some people that I know have done that a little bit later and it's kind of in a way halted their career to an extent because they've not managed to get the rack up the early fights as early as of course you have been able to and I'm sure that is a big benefit to your career. Yeah without a doubt I mean you see a lot of like Olympians and world amateur champions and or even just amateurs in general turn over in the mid-20s yeah, yeah. and sometimes you're in a bit of a rush at that age um, 
Whereas I, when, I, when I first turned professional, 18, 19, I wasn't in a rush. I didn't need to be in a rush. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's where I got all the learning side of it came in. I got to spar with various fighters, world champions, European champions, Commonwealth champions, British title challengers. And uh, to mix in that company at such a young age, um, it, it stands me in good stead now. Um, at 26, I, I'll probably be helping someone who's turning pro, um, you know, showing them the ropes, so mm-hmm. as to speak. So um, it was such it was such a good a good way to engage and learn about the sport more, and that's why I turned pro early, so I could get the the experience needed. Yes, yes, definitely. And so you you've then now had a decent amount of time in the pros, and you had a decent amount of time in the amateurs, and so. I was interested in what differences are there between the amateur and the pro game? Uh, the first difference I, I'd probably say is uh, the, the pace mm-hmm. of the of the fight. Um, in, in the amateurs, it's quite fast pace. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, it's, you know, usually about point scoring and, and you know, more technical. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas the professional side of it, it's a lot more slower. You're a bit more planted on your feet. You know, you might have to take a few shots to give a few shots and, it's more more tactical as well. Um, in the amateur, it's, it's just about getting the points, moving, getting the points, scoring. Uh, but the pros, it's you know, it's it's the hurt business, as they say. So you've got to really be more tactical, and you've got to be thinking more um, in the pros. Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely. And so you've now had the the thirteen fights, and so which fight would you say you've performed your best in? Oh, uh, that's a good. That's a good question. Um, I believe my fight against Ibra Riaz for the second time. Mm-hmm. I thought it was. I thought that was my best performance. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought the best fight I've been involved in was at the arena, um, which which I felt I slightly underperformed. Right. Um, I got put on my backside twice. So yeah, hold my hands up, and I was hurt the second on the second knockdown. I was very hurt, mm-hmm. and I thought. For that fight, it was a shame it wasn't on telly because it definitely would have stole the show. Yeah, yeah. How I got put down twice, came back, back and just literally took it to him. You know, I showed a lot of heart, and so I'd probably say that's the best fight I've been involved involved in. Uh, but my best performance, I'd probably say, was the Ibra Riaz fight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, great, great. And so you've you've been on a, a matchroom card not too long yep. ago now, and yep. I was interested for a. A upcoming fighter in a way what is it like being on a matchroom card it's massive um it's it's such a, a good positive feeling to be amongst other great fighters mm-hmm. um and for myself you know you can learn things by just watching and you know how they conduct themselves how the whole show set up it's not just about what the cameras see it's off camera off camera as well mm-hmm. you know you, you pick up quite a lot of experience in that sense um i was fortunate enough to have a hotel be put for myself so it was like being treated like royalty something i've never had before um and it's just made me get that bit between my teeth a little bit more now it's made me a lot more hungrier um because i want to be back there on them shows as soon as possible um and obviously for my family it was such a proud moment um so yeah getting on them match card cards it's um it's it's, it's amazing honestly it's, it's every fighter's dream especially from the small hall scene Definitely. Um, so yeah, hopefully I can get back there soon. Mm-hmm. And I believe you will. But unfortunately, you did suffer the a draw on that matchroom card. How yeah. how uh, frustrating was it to get that draw? Obviously, it wasn't a loss, but a draw can sometimes still feel like a loss. It did. It honestly felt like a loss to me. Um, but looking in the hindsight, you know, I boxed in a six round fight. I've been put down twice. So in theory, I'm four rounds down there. Yeah. Um, but obviously, I managed to still win the rounds and still compete at the highest possible level, yeah. and uh, and still managed to come away with a draw. So I was quite fortunate. Yeah, it's a shame it wasn't over a longer duration because mm-hmm. I feel like if it was over an eight round distance, I, I would have won the fight by a couple of rounds. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was it was quite frustrating. I, I won't lie, and it's something that's going to stand me in good stead again. Um, the guy I boxed, he was he come he come to win. He was very hungry, you know. Um, and these these type of fighters, who who you know, for example, um, for example, the guys who are boxed, 
he probably won't ever get a platform that big ever yeah, again. Yeah. So that could change his whole landscape of his career. So and it certainly could change mine as well. So it's a good experience. A lot of people step up on matchroom shows and get beat. So to get a draw, it's not it's not the end of the world. And I'll get another opportunity. So I'm quite pleased about that. And Eddie Earn himself said he'll have me back. So it's a win win for me. Yeah, definitely. Even though it's a draw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. I'm glad that you're maybe maybe not in the moment, but in the hindsight, you are taking the positives out of it. That's a very important thing to do. Yeah, without doubt, mate. I mean. Um, in boxing there's going to be a lot of negatives uh, a lot of positives a lot of negatives ups and downs uh, this sport is a, a whirlwind as they say um, but the main thing is you learn from your mistakes and I made a lot of mistakes that night uh, I was too eager I was too eager to impress as would probably everybody else be um, I should have just kept composed and, and just stuck to my boxing and it would have been an easy night's work for me but uh, I managed to get involved uh you know, the tactics went out the window and I just wanted to put on a, a very good fight for everybody and, and that's what happened. I got put on my backside twice mm. um, and it is what it is. It is indeed. And so you've been now working with, am I right in saying, VIP Boxing? Yeah, yeah, they're my management company, yeah. Mm -hmm. What is it like now working with them? Yeah, VIP Boxing, uh, they're a very good uh, company. Mm -hmm. um, Steve Wood is my manager. He's the, uh, the owner of the... Uh, of the VIP boxing mm -hmm. and I've been with VIP, VIP boxing from the start, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I hope to continue, hope to continue with them because they've, they've treated me good. Um, you know, they've looked after me and they've got me the right fights for the right stage of my career. And, uh, and at the end of the day, they've got my best interests at heart. And at the end of the day, I want to be fat fighting for title soon. And I'll be making as much possible money as I can, uh, for my family. So, um, that's down to them. So, yeah, without VIP boxing, I probably wouldn't have been in this position, boxing at the arena and being able to fight in my hometown and, you know, and things like that. Definitely, definitely. And so you've not since that draw come back and gotten a victory. And so I'm, ho I'm sure you're wanting to keep that r winning run back going. And so that kind of leads me on to when will you be fighting next? Uh, I'll be honest, um, the last couple of weeks I've had a few personal family issues um, um, but I'm putting to them what I'm putting them to one side uh, shall I say um, and I'm looking to probably get out um, mid mid to end November mm -hmm. something like that um, I, I, I want to get I, I want to get a good victory before before the years out and then next year I'll be looking to to gain some big fights and big domestic fights or big international fights uh, we'll just see what opportunities come my way. Uh, whatever provides the best financial package for my family, whatever provides the best sort of, you know, how can I say, if there's a title on the line or yeah. something like that, you know, then it's it's worth looking at and, uh, and considering. And that's what I want to do. I want to be fighting for titles and putting my stamp on this sport. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. And so you spoke a bit about how you, in the, in the fight which you did end up drawing, you came to impress and you were eager to achieve. And so... That's kind of two things which I'm sure people will want to hear from you and will make people want to come and watch you. And so why why should people come and watch you? What makes you different? Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a good clean boxer, but I've also got that bit between my teeth when needed. Yeah. Um, I'm a good aggressive counter puncher. Uh, I throw lots of combinations, lots of good body shots, lots of, lots of uppercuts and hooks. Um, I'm quite fast. Um I hit fairly hard, so I've been told, even though my record doesn't really suggest that, which is nice. Um, but yeah, I, I think people should come and watch me because I'm an exciting fighter. You know, I put on exciting fights and people always come away from the shows that I box on and say yours was the fight of the night all the time. And that's not just my supporters, that's other fighters' supporters as well. So to, to hear that on a regular basis, you know, it, no, I know I'm doing something right. Um and that's what it's about, entertainment. Definitely, definitely, definitely. And so you've kind of in a, in a good point of your career now. You spoke that you're going to be trying to get these big fights next year. And so I was interested in how far do you believe you can go in the sport? Look, in boxing, you write your own, you know, you write your own history. You know, you, you, you make your own look in this world, so to speak. Um, I'd like to think I can, I can compete for a British title. You know, anything past that would be, you know, would be amazing. But, you know, 
I think a British title, I think I'm definitely capable of competing for one of them, whether that be in the next 12 to 18 months. Um, I definitely believe I'm good enough to, to, to be fighting in a British title fight. Um, that's what it's about. And that's what I want. I want to be fighting for titles and making my family proud. So, yeah, I think the British title will be my main, my world title, I should say. Mm, yeah, definitely. And so I've seen in the super lightweight category, you're ranked 14th in England, which is very impressive. And so this kind of leads me on to if you could maybe give me, a, maybe not for now, but maybe for the future, a dream opponent. That's a tough one because I'm not really, I never really uh, am one to call anybody out. I'm mm. not really that type of person. I mean, you know, I'm like you said, I'm 14th in Britain now. I mean, there's some top fighters in that top 10 and mm. that's what I want to be aiming for, the top 10s. Um, so anybody, anybody in the top 10, um, I think would make a good fight. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. Boxing, anything can happen. And mm-hmm. sometimes, you know, fighters who are supposed to fight each other never end up fighting each other. So yeah. um, I don't really look too far ahead of that. Um, whoever's got the titles at the time, British title, um, they're, they're most likely the people who I want to be competing against. So, for example, Don Smith's got it now. Yeah, yeah. By the time I feel like I'll be in the position to fight for that title, I think that he might not be there. I think he might have gone on to something bigger for himself so which which i which i wouldn't uh wouldn't disagree with you know everybody's got to try and get as far as they can um but yeah anybody who's got the titles that i want then yeah i'll fight great that's a, a very good mentality and so you've you're in the a weight division with somebody I, I believe you're in with adam azim and i was interested in what's your your thoughts on him because he's, he's very young and he's being tipped to be one the one the youngest title challenges or title holders in the in the near future and i was interested as what you think as somebody in his weight division uh why is he so good uh well when, when i've seen him fight um whether it be live or on sky sports um he's got quite fast hands he looks like he's got a good dig on him and he's a very good boxer you know um he's obviously had a good amateur pedigree and he's young and hungry mm-hmm. and um and to be fair, yeah, he probably could go on and, and achieve great things in the sport if he keeps level-headed and keeps working hard. Um, I think he's a very good, good, talented prospect, and I think uh, I think they should move him quick, uh, but but not too quick. But I think he's definitely capable of of beyond British European level, hundred percent. Mm-hmm. Great. That was that was just uh, something I was interested in. But I'll leave it with this final question, which I always like to ask, and that is: Would you like to shout anything out? Uh. To be honest with you, I just uh, want to thank all my supporters who have bought tickets past or present. Uh, people who, who you know follow my social media and support me that way. Um, my sponsors, without them, I wouldn't be able to do this as a, as a full-time career. Um, and boxing's a short career, let me add. Um, so it's about making making your mark, taking a, you know, making sure people remember your name. And that's what it's about. And hopefully I can create my own little bit of legacy and people come away from my fights entertained so yes yeah, what i thank everybody for the support great great i'm sure you will be leaving a very big mark on the sport and so thank you very much for doing this interview mate no my my absolute pleasure and uh hope to do it again one day yes definitely maybe a little bit further down the line when you're fighting for these british belts we can do a return interview Fingers crossed, mate. Yeah, that's the dream. All right, great. Okay, well, if you are new around here and you haven't yet subscribed, please do so. Like the video if you do need like the video, and thanks for watching.